low again. Okay, so here's another five fish that uh, me and Danny Boy just picked. So the again, fantastic varieties that you can see in there. To be fair. Okay, so that draws us to the end of the first trip to Yoshi Koi 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 Farm. What's going on guys, it's your boy Jack, aka the Balding Reefer, coming at you today's video, which is all about harvesting one of the mud ponds on the largest koi farm in Europe. Let's go. So for those of you that are new to the channel, hello, my name is Jack. I'm indeed the Balding Reefer, or should I say bald now. I specialize in tropical cold water pond and marine fish. This series is a six part series all about visiting the largest koi farm in Europe, uh, having a look at what they've got to offer and looking at some of the show winning fish that are available at fantastic prices to everybody and also f finding out about the inner workings of a koi farm. If this kind of content interests you, do me a humongous favor, please. Swipe up around here. You're going to see a subscribe button. Hit that. And there's a little, little tiny bell next to it. If you hit that and select all, that basically means you want to see all the notifications on this channel. That way you don't get to miss any single one of the videos that we put out or we put up. And if you're returning, welcome back, my people. As you've seen from the previous video, a link above, some of the fish on offer are absolutely outstanding. We are about to net um, one of the large mud ponds and see what actually comes out. I have no clue what's in there. I know it's just a mix of toe size fish. Could be a whole host of different sizes. So it's going to be absolutely fantastic. As you can see, the mud ponds here behind me. And here, these are just one, two, three. These are three mud ponds out of about 70. Let me send the drone up, show you everything. Let's go. Okay, so talking of mud ponds, here's one of the uh, one of the ponds that's still yet to actually be harvested out. These guys are probably sat at about four inches, five inches maybe, but just an absolute sea of colour. And like I say, that, that's in a in a natural mud pond, and then there's another one as well that's got some uh, some smaller fish in. But what we'll do once we've harvested the lake down there is. We'll actually go through and we'll look at each individual one and see what we can actually see sooner than in the top. Let's go. Okay, so I'm whispering now because just as I was about to show you the mud pond that we're going to be harvesting, I've just come down and I'll send these here. Look at the way they're all swimming together. Now that's proper safety in numbers. All coming up the simmy now. We all want some food. It's exactly what they're clapping at the surface for. How fantastic is that? So all these are karashigoys and chigoys. Absolutely fantastic. What well, we're going to be harvesting is over there. Let's go. Okay, so the water's finally low enough. Uh, the guys have got the sea net in now. Uh, what we're going to do is corral the fish up into one corner uh, so we can actually see what's, what's starting to come out. We've got the Tessa Koi van ready to load these bad boys onto, aren't we, mate? You are. I said we've got the Tessa van behind us ready to we load have these onto. Quality. That was custom built. Custom built, there you go. If you believe 
believe that. Don't believe anything. <laughs> well, yeah, I for one am super, super excited. So you've got two people leading the top of the sea net, and then you've got two at the bottom, which is basically pulling the rope to be able to stop the fish actually going underneath. Obviously, you can see he's getting really low there to the bottom. Because what you don't want to do is the fish to start skipping uh, and shooting underneath the bottom of the net. There's going to be some drone footage in a second of this popping up as well, so I'll keep the voiceover running. But honestly, I am so excited right now. Oh, this is unreal. This is not the kind of stuff you get to see every day. So these sea nets are obviously custom built for the different sizes of the lakes that people have and stuff like that. Like I, like I said earlier on with a little bit of the drone footage, this is one of about 70. So we've, uh, we had a chat with Merv and Ashley and Ernest, the farm owner, and said, look, is there any chance? I said, yeah, of course, of course. We'll do one now and we'll do one on the, tr on the trip on the 20th and 23rd. So the, those that are coming over for that trip, hit me up, let me know. We can go through the costings. It's really, really cheap. Uh, and you can come away with some fantastic fish. There you go, fish already starting to skip, folks. <laughs> this is mint. Yeah, all the do is to keep working the net back and back, but let me snap back in a second and get a little bit close and I'll show you the final third. So, just like they have in Japan. They've got the truck ready to rock and roll. So got the... any fish in there? No, there's a dead frog though. Oh, that doesn't count. Yeah, it's a dead frog. Um, there's literally frogs galore over here. But yeah, aerated uh, disc in the bottom. The same in that one there as well. Uh, Next on to obviously stop these guys from jumping. They've been in the lake an awful long time now, so they're not going to be used to actually seeing uh, a net of any sort of form, to be fair. So obviously they're going to be very jumping and be very skittish. Oh, a big one just jumped over the top. A very nice looking kahaku, I think that was. Skipped straight over the top, so there's still at least one left. Feel free, it's absolutely fine. You haven't got to worry about the shots. Honestly, just do your thing. That's not how we vlog. We never set a scene or anything like that. We shoot what we see. You excited though? Looking forward to this, yeah. All the colours look here soon. Yeah, that's exactly why I'm up here, so we can just see it start glowing. So just removing the uh, the pump at the bottom of the water at the minute. Because obviously when they start crawling in to this corner, the fish can't bang themselves into it. You see the size of this so what he's doing now is actually, I think he's pulling it in front of the pump, so he's just moving it back a little bit. We'll come around the corner so we can uh, see the colours explode. There you go, folks. Oh, I can see movement. There you go, there's another one just jumping. Look at all the frogs every time I walk down, the frogs jumping. There's probably in the region of about 500 to 1,000 fish now, just in this little, this little pocket here. There's uh, Merv down there now, we're pulling in the bottom of the scene that. 
It's an art form in itself, this is to get this netting. As you guys would have seen when we tried to do ours on the farm last year. <laughs> it was pretty difficult. There you go. You see the fish coming up to the front now. Oh, there's a few jumpers. Oh, a lovely O'Chiba. I've seen the back of that one then. What we're going to do now is we're going to pull this really short to stop the fish being able to barrel up over the top. And then start moving it all down to, to this side down here. There you go. There's a, looks like another O'Chiba. Fantastic until it comes out. Wow. Just wow. I'm about to drop down onto the bank. As you see the fish coming up now. Some nice shoeys down there on the bottom. Another big shoey there, he's back breaking. I mean, look at the orange on that. Wow. Wow. You see, all these have got to be selected and graded out yet, but. Holy mackerel. So what they're doing now is they're actually just pegging up uh, the sides of the net. <laughs> to be able to stop these guys from jumping out. There is just colours galore in there and a whole host of different sizes as well. This is absolutely insane. You see some nice lemon harrow wackies in there as well. The oranges that you see on the fish are just literally mind blowing. So this gentleman's coming down now with uh, a pan net and he's got a couple of sock nets. So what they'll do is they'll actually sock the fish up in the pan net and then take them up to the top and drop them into the, uh, the two bowls that's up there. But, I mean, some of the colours of the fish that you can see down there. Boy, oh boy. Okay, so they've uh, just started to wet the sock net now, just so the fish can move easily. They're not going to damage the scales or skin or anything like that. Then when they go into the sock net, it's like a, a neoprene kind of material. And there's a lovely, lovely Yamabuki over on just there. So there's the, uh, the first lot coming out. I mean, look at the colours that are coming out on them. Absolutely incredible. Here's the next bag load going in. And they're still pulling even more out. So we'll follow these right through the whole process of coming out and then going into the into the koi house and seeing where they go. I mean, look at the shoes. Oh my gosh. I mean, that is just something special. I'm so excited. He's actually, he does work, I promise. 
Cool. Yes, I'm just in a shoe that's got like a like a Tancho spot on it, three of them. Get that dead frog out of the way. And I better switch around the other side because I don't want to get in anybody's way. Heavy. Ooh, that's a big load of fish there. This is one of the things about coming to a working farm to buy your fish direct out of the farm. This is the experience that you get to see. This is what you guys are going to get to witness firsthand when we come out on the 20th of May again for three days. Anybody wants to come over, hit me up in the comment section, reach out via email. Wow. There's even more still coming out. This is incredible. There's that shoe I was talking about. Look at that. Wow. Danny's getting in it now. He's got the drone hovering above. And it's on. You seen the shoe in there? down. Three steps on it. Proper unusual fish. Is this all that you dreamed it be? Ending up here. again rewind it don't watch any more forward rewind it back watch that again that was absolutely insane let's go over and uh yeah. give our thanks to the lads it looks like you painted it all up and stuff. big props to these boys thank you very much brother that was absolutely epic Absolutely epic. So what's going to happen with these now? We'll quickly go through them. Yeah. A little bit look and uh, put them in and start treating them. Fantastic. Right. Snap back to you all in a second. Let's go. Okay. So before we actually start taking these fish out of the vats that you guys have just seen, just thought I'd pan back to you at the end of the day and just splice this bit of footage in so you can actually see what it looks like when it's empty. And just to give you some sort of size comparison, that is in a normal lens at the moment. That is now in a wide angle lens. That's probably about 12 meters deep from the surface. I wouldn't be able to swim down to the bottom of that. You've got, what? Well, you've got no chance. That is insane. But to think all them fish that you're about to see or that you've seen a moment ago, have all come out of here today. It's not the calm after the storm, isn't it? Brilliant. But what's going to happen next is because there weren't a lot of stocked volume in here, the water that got pumped out of here to be reused that's gone into here, when there's more fish to be added, what will happen is the water will be pumped back into there from this side. But love the idea of how they've got these just 
strung across the top instead of netting the whole top of my life that's probably exactly what i'm going to do with mine when i get back to be fair i mean that's just literally it's like normal freddy's thread in it sorry guys i was just asking danny's opinion <laughs> it's like a nylon thread but again it stops the heron going through so yeah there you go obviously everything's still protected by the otter fence and stuff like that all the way around but no doubt their excitement is going through the roof. The reason we're so lulled now is because we've gone through the whole day and we're currently at the end of the day. When we take you around there in a second, you're just going to see how stupidly happy we were with all them fish. Um, make sure you stick around for this one. It's a long one, but some seriously, seriously epic stuff happens. Hit me up in the comment section down below. Any of the fish that you see me or Danny picking out and saying, oh, can you put that to one side for me? Oh, can you put that to one side for me? They are all available. So what a day man what a day it's weird doing it like this because we're at the end of the day now we've already done the sign out for the video well, you guys haven't seen it but i know i'm just waffling now making you wait let's go so it's getting ready now to take the fish out of here and put them into the bowls before they actually go up to the top and start their course of treatment where are these going so where we've been bowling up on the previous video, link above, we're going to go into that one there, it's ready. I am so excited right now. Let me snap back to you in a second though, once these are full of water, and we're adding in some fish. Okay, so what Moon's doing at the moment is his temperature matching the water that's coming out of the hose here to the water that's in these vats. Um, I mean, just look at that, absolutely incredible. Tell you what, people coming over on the 20th, it's going to be nuts in it. So they've saved us one to harvest on the 20th when we come over. There he is, Yoshi Goy. So this is a different bowl to the one we've been using. Uh, so the bowl we have been using is at the top there. The uh, reason for that is obviously full biosecurity. These have come out of the lake. They don't know what's on them or what's inside of them. So that's why we're using a, a separate bowl to actually put these guys into. And obviously you've got a really good clear view bowl on the top there. I'm probably gonna sit up on the top deck and just admire the view. Here he goes, folks. Thank you. Wow. So what Merv's looking for now, he's looking for what he wants to take out for the farm. What he can see potential in and that kind of stuff. So to witness this firsthand. This second to none. that's coming out that's gone in the farm's bowl can you put something like these? a selection is that more of the grow ones? I can but some of this obviously is is very good yes that one not Sit down there, down the middle. Can I have video of that, yeah? Huh? Can I have video? Yeah. Which one are you looking at, Dan? Sanko. Sanko. Well, you want something in here? This? Sanko, you want about? Yeah. 
So if there's something, which, right, is, you put in here, eh? which is bigger it's fish, here. he's already put my shiro in there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 There's the next load coming through. Yeah, it is. He's beautiful. Yeah. A little bit of scar damage on top, but... That's full colours. Parawaki there. Some more shells coming through. That in for me. Um, no, that's fine. On this one. Wow. Very excited, aren't they? Oh, definitely. Mm. Very, very good looking grammar. Mm. Uh, How old are they? Young Nissa, is it? Yeah, it's a young Nissa. Just no space to keep them inside. So. Absolutely fantastic fish coming out. I'd definitely be interested in that one you just put in. Mm, nice. <laughs> Beautiful. Do you want the other one or can I jump on the other one? Dive it, yeah, go on. Dive it. Sure? Dive it. Yeah. Can I do this one, bud? No, but there's one that is really nice, little baby. Yeah. yeah. Just getting to view a harvest like this is just insane. Yeah, especially when certain bugs are selecting at the old It's dog eat dog now. Yeah. <laughs> Gloves are off. There's a lot of big shoes here.
Yeah. Very good, sir. Yeah, that one. And then something else that's caught our attention in here. I think it's been eaten. What's the matter with that one? This. It's not much shine to it. What would you call it now? Yeah, I'd seen that when he had first come out. That is fantastic. Just the pattern on it, the way the way it changes, it's not something you see in the market at all. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, in incredible. Just a couple yeah. highlighted while we were there. No, absolutely. Okay, so here's the, uh, the next load going in. Honestly, it's some of the fish in there. Can we have a look at this one? If you can pull that just up a little bit for me. Yep. I like that. Appreciate that, mate. Thank you. Okay. So for those of you that weren't watching, what he's done then is actually swapped it for the better fish that was in there. <clears throat> See the ones just stayed in, but he's picked me the better one out of the two. Yeah. Come on. We'll match in a second with the next lot's going in. Okay, so this is a fish that I've decided to uh, pick and actually keep at the farm uh, just to be interesting to see how it develops over a sort of uh, two three year period and see what it can actually do uh, I think the coloration it's really interesting the way it wrap, the red wraps around the eye the way it steps through in that sort of lightning bolt-esque kind of pattern um, it'll be really interesting to see what it does so it's uh, one of Nash's little pet projects isn't it mate? it is, we'll have a go see what we do with it so, yeah. You never know, it might come up on, on the Old Reefer site as some sort of giveaway prize at some point. You never know. That would be epic. There we go, folks. You heard it here first. Let's go. Okay. So here's another five fish that uh, me and Danny Boy just picked. So the two oil series, the Lemon Araki, the Gromo. I like the, the stepping on it. So that's going to be one for Brooklyn uh, to put into his pond. There you go, son. Oh, yappy. There's another doots. Absolutely incredible. When the sun catches them, the luster of the sheen. <laughs> Outstanding. So, yeah, we'll get these in the bag. We'll get these in the top one up there as well to rest off. Oh, no, Danny's dipping another one. There we go, folks. Let's go. Okay, so just having a little bit of a mooch up and having a look at some of the uh, some of the mud ponds. This was the the late spawning that was done last year. These were a load of uh, three to five inch fish. Again, fantastic varieties that you can see in there. To be fair. So there's got to be a couple of thousand fish in there, aren't there? So they were saying when they actually put the fry out in these ponds, they only actually put 150 grams of fry per one of these, because that's all they can physically take when they're getting up to this sort of size. But you can see how loosey green the water is. Natural filtration. The aerators aren't running at the moment or anything like that. Oh, wow. Martin's just pointed out uh, something really interesting. The uh, tadpole flow. 
But you can see some of the smaller fish in there, probably coming up to about an inch or so. But again, these are just predating on the, the wild stuff that's in there. Mr. Frog, swimming around there. Well, yeah, it's amazing to see to be there. Little cat, a little tabby. Hey, buddy. You okay? Let's have a little fussy. Yeah. You looking for your dinner, mate? Hey, which pond are you going for? This one or the bigger fish? Hey. So apparently this tabby's a great little mouser from the farm. Super friendly as well. Yeah, the uh, the fish that we seen yesterday, the fish that we seen over the past three days, just you run out of superlatives. You really do. But this is just what you can see that's actually on the surface. I mean, you can you can see in the depths of of the green water that there's even more fish underneath coming up. It's great to see. Really, really is great to see. Now, I don't know whether... Can you hear the frogs? I don't know whether... Oh, well, watch this now. When you walk near the edge, see all the frogs jumping in? Go yeah, watch. I keep going round. Can you see them all jumping on in? I don't know whether all the ponds have got fishing. Oh, yeah. No, these ones have got fishing as well. They'll probably say these are about two inch. I'll ask Ashley in a second sort of how long these guys have been in here. But obviously when they're, when they're mowing the same way as we do, obviously, yes, the grass is going in the water, but all it's going to do is aid in the infrasura that's there. Not sure whether there's any fish in this one. Yeah, another few small ones. I don't know if they've been missed. There's a lot of a lot of fish in these mud ponds and for me i mean the excitement of when we actually netted that one was unreal wasn't it oh it's was a mess there's a mess of color mess of fish all shapes and sizes all colors unbelievable well i mean for me what i enjoyed was when they come out you can get to say oh can you put that to one side for me can you put that to one side for me first pick if you want Just yeah absolutely brilliant to see and like I say obviously when these start to get harvested off some of these are the fish that are very soon to be for sale when they get big enough all of them are netted off like this super simple systems just running on aerators like so and it just goes to show that a little does go a hell of a long way this one, see what we can see. If there's anything in there. Frogs. There are some more fish in there. Nice tan show there, little white one. That was nice to see. But again, these just go on and on and on. The workers that are, that are on site, to be fair, don't stop. Absolute machines at grafting these guys are. So the uh, one thing I do want to point out, we, we spoke about hospitality, I bet when you're here on the farm. The actual farm owner, Ernest, he's actually taken in uh, a lot of Ukrainians. Um, he's put them up in the palace, which is the big house that you see there. So they call it a palace um, in Poland. So the biggest house that is on the estate whether there's 200 houses or whether there's two houses, whether there's one house, the biggest house on that land is always referred to as the palace. So he's, he's put a, a, a lot of Ukrainians up in the palace, a lot of Ukrainians up on the other side, all of his other properties, and he doesn't expect absolutely anything off them. Everybody on this farm gets, in, gets treated incredibly, incredibly well. We haven't wanted for anything whilst we've been here. To come over on these trips, and to get the experience 
to get the knowledge base, to pick things up, to be able to get to walk around and have the complete farm to yourself. Nothing is hidden, nothing is not on show or anything like that. It's, it's absolutely brilliant to see. Okay, so that draws us to the end of the first trip to Yoshikoi Koi, Koi Farm over in Poland. There's going to be plenty, plenty more of these tours. As I keep saying, if you want to come and experience all this for yourself, hit me up down below, jack at reeferaquatics.com. There is going to be some stuff going on to reeferaquatics.com as well. Um, it's been an absolute blast. It's been insane. I'm exhausted. We've had a hell of a lot of fun, haven't we? <laughs> Straight back out here on the 20th though, there's an awful lot more people coming. There are still spaces available and then there will be spaces available for the next trip as well after that. It's probably going to be a once or twice a month thing. But you know the drill by now. Follow me on social media. Facebook and Twitter is at the Balding Reefer. Instagram is slightly different. That's at the dot balding dot reefer. But as ever, stay safe, stay sane. Most important people stay happy. Balding Reefer, out.